in factorization we'll be learning about how to find the factors of a polynomial for numbers we know we used to find out factors of a number by taking out all the factors or by prime factorizing the numbers but of what if i have to find the factors of a linear polynomial or a factor of any polynomial whose degree is 1 or greater than 1 now we have different methods factorization of quadratic polynomial when i'm talking about quadratic polynomials i'm talking about polynomials of degree 2 the most common method of factorizing a quadratic polynomial is the middle term split method it's the middle term split method suppose we have a quadratic polynomial ax square plus bx plus c it's a quadratic polynomial because the degree of the variable the highest degree of the variable is 2 and a b c are the constants now in middle term split what do we do we split up this middle term as the name suggests we split up the middle term which is the middle term of the polynomial bx and it is split up into two parts k1x and k2x where k1 and k2 are integers such that k1 plus k2 will give you your b and k1 into k2 will give you the product a into c i know it's a little confusing when i do it without an example so let us do it with different examples i'll be discussing four different cases depending on four different situations let us again repeat what we will be doing in the middle term split in the middle term split will be splitting up bx into two factors two factors are k1x and k2x especially k1 and k2 are integers and these integers must be carefully chosen so that k1 plus k2 is equal to the middle term coefficient b the middle term constant b and the product at the same time should be equal to the product of the constant ac let us understand the middle term split by taking four different examples and the four different examples i am taking are related to different combination of factors depending on their size on their signs so case 1 suppose the constants a and c the product of the constants a and c is positive and b is also positive in every case of middle term split we will be concerned about only three two things first the product ac and the sum b now the product ac we have to look at the sign of the product ac and also the sign of this middle term b depending on this we choose our factors if the product ac is positive and b is positive a c and b they are all integers and when is this possible the product ac will be positive if a and c both are positive or a and c both are negative at the same time the sum b will be positive as we have discussed earlier we will split this middle term b into two factors k1 and k2 and i have to choose k1 and k2 in such a way that the sum k1 plus k2 which represents my b should be positive and the product k1 and k2 should be equal to the product ac which should also be positive that means in very simple words i have to choose two integers whose product will be positive and whose sum will also be positive and this is possible only when both these integers are positive for example If I have a polynomial 3x square plus 5x plus 2, so here we have a as 3, b as 5, and c as 2. Now I have to split this b into two parts. Which two parts? That depends on the product ac. ac is 3 into 2 
AC is 3 into 2, 6. So, I have to split up 6 into 2 parts. For that, I will write possible factors of 6. 6 into 1 or 2 into 3. So, I have expressed 6 in two ways. Either 6 can be expressed as a product of 6 as 1 or it can be expressed as a product of 2 and 3. Now, out of these two combinations, I have to choose that combination which will give me the sum 5. Obviously, this is the combination which will give me the sum 5. So, this can be split up, B can be split up into two factors 2 and 3 where 2 is my k1 and 3 is my k2. So, rewriting the equation or the expression, I will write 3x square b is 5. So, in place of 5, I will write 2 plus 3. I have split up 5 as 2 plus 3 and not 6 and 1. I have chosen the values of k1 and k2 to be 2 and 3 because 2 into 3 will give me sum 5 and product 6 into x plus 2. Opening the bracket, I will have 3x square plus 2x plus 3x plus 2. Next, I have since it has become a quadrinomial consisting of 4 terms. I will have to group it and then take common. From the first two terms, I can take x common. Taking x common inside the bracket, I will have 3x plus 2. And from the next two terms, as they are co-primes, there is nothing common between them. I will take 1 as common and I will have within the bracket 3x plus 2. So, it is my correct factorization because I am getting equal factors in both the terms. Next, again I will take 3x plus 2 common. Taking 3x plus 2 common, first it was a quadrinomial. Now, I have reduced it to a binomial having two terms in which 3x plus 2 is common. Taking 3x plus 2 common, inside I will have x plus 1. So, the two factors of the given polynomial are 3x plus 2 and x plus 1. Now, let us understand this one by one using clearly. So, first I state here the value of AC is 6. 6 can be written as 6 into 1 or 2 into 3. Now, I have to carefully choose whether I choose the factors 6 and 1 or 2 and 3. For that, I have to see what their sum comes to be. 6 plus 1 will give me 7, which is not equal to the middle term 5. And 2 plus 3 gives us 5, which is equal to my middle term 5. So, my k1 becomes 2 and k2 becomes 3. So, 3x square plus 5x plus 2 can again be rewritten as 3x square plus 2x plus 3x plus 2 because this 5 have been split up as 2 plus 3. Again, a quadrinomial has come which can be factorized by grouping first two terms and then taking common. And finally, I will see taking 3x plus 2 common in the next step, I will get 3x plus 2 and x plus 1 as factors of the given polynomial. So, we have discussed this case where both the product and the sum are positive. Now, coming to case 2, in this case, AC is positive, that means the product of two factors is positive, but their sum is negative and this is possible only when both the integers are negative. Starting with an example, suppose we have 3x square minus 5x plus 2. Now, I have to split up this minus 5 into two terms whose sum will give me the same as a sum of 3 and 2 that is 6 plus 6 a positive 6 and a negative and whose sum will should give us minus 5. If I split up 6 that is the product of a and c into two factors 
I can split them as minus 2 and minus 3 so that I get a sum of plus a sum of minus 5 and a product of plus 6. So the two factors k1 and k2 will be minus 2 and minus 3. Rewriting the given polynomial again, I will have 3x square minus 3x minus 2x because minus 3 and minus 2 will give you minus 5 and the product of minus 3 and minus 2 will give you plus 6 which is same as the product of 3 and 2. Now splitting it into factors further by grouping and taking common, we will see that the two factors of the polynomial are 3x minus 2 and x minus 1. Now let us come to case 3. We have discussed that what to do when the, both the product are positive and the sum is positive. We have also studied how, what to do when the product is positive but at the same time the sum is negative. Case 3 is very interesting in this the product is negative. When will the product of two integers be negative? The product of two integers will be negative if either any one of the one of the numbers is negative. If the number with a greater absolute value is negative, then obviously the sum will be negative. And if the number with the greater absolute value is positive, then the sum will be positive. So here we need to be very careful while choosing the factors. This can be explained very well with an example. Suppose the polynomial is given to be px equal to x square plus x minus 6. If I look at my ac, ac is minus 6 and the different ways of splitting up ac are minus 2 into 3 and minus 6 into 1 which we are not considering. We could have chosen minus 3 and plus 2. If I would have chosen minus 3 and plus 2, although the product would have been minus 6, but the sum would not come to plus 1. The sum would have been minus 1. The coefficient of x that is the middle term is plus 1 and will get a plus 1 only when the number with the greater, greater absolute value that is 3 as a positive sign. So, rewriting this, I will have x square minus 2x plus 3x minus 6 and splitting it further, we can see that the two factors of px are x minus 2 and x plus 3. So, what is important is to choose both the factors k1 and k2 very wisely. The last case where again the product is positive but this sign the sum is also negative. The product is negative as well as the sum is negative. So, obviously, we will take the factors k1 and k2 in an alternate way. Previously, we had chosen the factor with a greater absolute value to be positive and this time we will choose the factor with greater absolute value to be negative. So, rewriting AC, if I rewrite AC as minus 3 into 2, minus 3 into 2 will give you minus 6 and at the same time minus 3 and plus 2 will also give you minus 1. And moving further in the same way, proceeding in the same way, we will see that the factors of px are x minus 3 and x plus 2.